we welcome all of you who have uh, come together online for our friday prayer service as you know every friday we get together in our church for one hour to pray right now we're doing it online for the time being and we do it separately in tamil and english which is a good thing for a lot of people because before we did it only in tamil then we started doing it bilingually with english uh, and tamil together with translation and then now we started doing it separately in tamil and then in english so before this english prayer one hour of tamil prayer went on from 6:30 to 7:30 and then this started at 7:45 all right so we welcome you and if you're coming here for the first time for our friday evening prayer well i hope that you will be encouraged greatly by this time of prayer we not only pray at this time but we also learn about prayer which i think is a very important uh, thing in the life of the church it is an important responsibility of the church to teach people to pray that's one of those things that we have to develop ourselves in in our spiritual life so a lot of people are newly starting their life in christ so they need to learn to pray and even those that have been there for many years and we think we know how to pray but then like i myself found out some years ago uh, that uh, i thought i knew how to pray and there is nothing to learn about prayer but then i learned that there's a lot to learn about prayer because i began to see the way some people prayed and the way that some people really got into it and they prayed not just having a list of prayer requests but they can pray praising the lord worshiping the lord and spending time in the lord and just uh, claiming the promises of god standing on the word of god and, and so on There's so many ways they pray and i saw that and i was really astonished and i really endeavored to learn from them and to learn really how to pray and it's been always very useful for me and i'm sure that will be useful for you i'm sure some of you have already started practicing what we teach because our whole session this one hour session is not just a one hour prayer a week you know it is to encourage you to pray every day spend some quality time in prayer so this is just practice time so we pray a little bit and then talk about certain things that we need to learn about prayer and uh, then we practice what we just learned what we taught we put it into practice the main thing that we are teaching about is how to pray using the bible i showed you that uh, when you pray with the word of god as the foundation of your prayer then your prayer becomes very powerful because the word of god is full of promises that god has given the word of god is full of encouraging words words that tell us how good god is how great god is how powerful god is and so on all these things really help us to pray and help us to focus on who we are praying to see when you bring all these things before your eyes before you even start praying it helps really you know you don't just come from wherever you're coming from and just kneel down and just start praying uh, all the time it doesn't work like that because you may be facing a lot of problems difficulties you're in great distress and uh, many times more than just trying to come and blurt out all your problems to god you need to become aware of who our god is how good he is how great he is what his promises are what the will of god is and what our god has done what he can do all these things this is what the bible is all about and uh, when you get into that and then you start praying as a result of contemplation of these things then prayer takes on a new dimension you see you bring all of these things into prayer and your whole attitude in prayer becomes different it's not 
it's not that you are just trying to tell god what you need you are aware very much of who god is what the world is like what your problem is and how your problem is nothing before our god and uh, you know that god can easily really help you and easily really bring comfort and strength that you need in that situation and give you the wisdom that you need to deal with that situation that you're dealing with and the knowledge that you need and all of these things you begin to pray for all of these things many times we need many different things sometimes we need a lot of power sometimes we need a lot of knowledge a lot of wisdom to do things correctly that will only solve the problem you know so the word of god is helpful in all these things so let's start by praying okay just let's just ask god to help us to learn how to pray father god in the name of jesus we come we thank you lord for this opportunity you've given to us as a church to come together father i pray that you will raise up this church as a real praying church not only as a church that really pays attention to the word of god and stands on god's word but also a praying church a church that knows that there is tremendous power in prayer that our god hears our prayers and that prayers change things in our world and i pray that today you'll teach us to pray just like you taught the disciples to pray I pray that you'll teach us to pray so that our prayer life will be enriched forever as a result of this session of prayer that we have together in Jesus name we pray amen well we are using the bible to pray right in that i think the book of psalms is probably the best portion to use when it comes to prayer you can use other portions also but psalms is probably the best portion and we are right now in psalm 33 as you know And last week we considered the first three verses and let me just read that and just remind you of what we said last week it says sing joyfully to the lord you righteous it is fitting for the upright to praise him praise the lord with the harp make music to him on the 10 stringed lyre sing to him a new song play skillfully shout for joy well last week i told you some things by way of introduction in the psalm that psalm 32 is a psalm about repentance where david teaches about repentance he has repented and when he repented he told god in psalm 51 lord if you will just forgive me my sins and restore me and put within me a clean heart and don't reject me but accept me and give me back the joy of my salvation if you do all this then i will teach the sinners your ways so that they will also come in repentance to you i'll teach people how to do this how to come back to god if they've sinned and he's keeping that promise here in psalm 32 he's teaching that's a teaching psalm you know in the heading it says it's a psalm of david a muskil muskil means instruction it's an instruction on repentance he's teaching people how to repent he's teaching them don't hide it don't keep your sins to yourself think that nobody sees it god sees it you know it it's going to be a problem until you keep it hidden and you try not to admit it even your physical health will be affected your bones will dry up he says but once you confess it you know you're blessed because blessed is the man whose transgressions are forgiven whose sin is covered and blessed is the man whose iniquities are not held against him are counted against him anymore we looked at that that's the whole teaching on repentance he's encouraging people to repent Now when you repent certainly you find that you have come into a good relationship with God and your relationship with God is restored and so on then you enter into the joy of the Lord so Psalm 
doesn't have a heading and usually when it doesn't have a heading they say that maybe it was part of Psalm 32 later on it was separated into Psalm 32 and 33 but maybe it was one Psalm before for some reason they separated it that's why there's no heading they say there are some Psalms where there's no heading and they always say look at the previous Psalm if there's a heading that probably suits this Psalm also so this is an instruction about how to praise the Lord, you know, really. How to worship the Lord. It's a psalm of praise for all people. He's inviting all the people. It's not just psalm that invites Israelis to praise God. Usually psalms are like that. It relates to the life of Israel, the people of Israel and their issues and so on. But this psalm is different. It's inviting everybody to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for all that he has done. And the most important thing is here, in the first three verses, he's giving a call to worship. And look at the call to worship, you know. When we come together to sing and worship in our church, you know. When we begin, we give a call to worship. You know, we say something like, let's worship the Lord. Let's stand up together. Praise the Lord. So, or we say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. It's a call to worship. And here's a wonderful call to worship. He says, sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with a harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. Now here, he mentions at least six things that we must do as we worship the Lord. One is sing joyfully. It's there. Sing joyfully in verse 1. Then he says, praise the Lord. That's also in verse 1. Then he says, make music. Make music, he says, in verse 2. And then he says, sing to him. That's in verse 3. And then he says, play. Play music, he says. Play Play skillfully. Eh? Play skillfully. I'm really thrilled to see that. Play skillfully. Skillful playing. Beautiful, wonderful playing by the musicians. And shout to the Lord. Eh? Shout for joy. Eh? This is the way you must worship. This is the call for worship. And what kind of call he is giving? He says, sing joyfully, praise him make music, sing, play skillfully, play your instruments skillfully, and shout for joy. That's the way to worship. I like that. You need to keep that in mind. You come to church, that's the kind of church, you know, that's a real church, where you come and sing joyfully, not just stand there, you know, just wait for it to be over. No. Where you praise, you get involved, and you make music, sing, play the instrument skillfully. Their music has a very wonderful part of that worship. And you shout for joy. There is some noise there the church. No. Don't disturb others next door. But make some noise. That's why I believe in air conditioning the place and giving it acoustic treatment and all that. Keep the sound inside so we don't disturb anybody. But we need to make some noise and worship the Lord. There is something to shout about, you know. There's something to shout about as we praise and worship the Lord. Now, this is amazing to me. That's so why last week we prayed for our worship, worship services, to really become better and better and better, I tell you. The way we worship will attract people. How many times I've seen in our church, you know, car drivers, taxi drivers, or people that just drove a car and came and to drop somebody or, and, and to wait outside to pick them up. They just come and they listen to the music. They'll see us singing, you know. They're drawn to it. They'll just come and sit and watch as it happens. And as a result, I have seen that many people come to know Christ. They've given their life to Christ. They become followers of Christ. 
Their lives have been changed. There are so many of them. One lady was walking behind our church on the street, going somewhere. And she heard us sing. In those days, the church was all open on the sides, no air conditioning. We were just singing. And she heard those songs. She's an English-speaking person. So she was very much interested in what we were singing because we were singing in English. And she stopped and heard it for some time and then came around. Came around because the gate to the church is all the way around the street. You have to go around. It's so about half a kilometer. You had to walk to come to the front gate. So she came to the front gate and through the front gate into the church and sat. And she gave her life to the Lord and, and lived for the Lord all her life. This is something I'm talking about. 35 years ago this happened when I first started. Just nobody told her to come. She's just drawn by the music, the way we were singing and worshiping, you know. That's why it's so important. So many, like I said, drivers of taxis and auto rickshaws, many auto rickshaw drivers that just come in draw, to drop people, pick up people, they end up listening to something and their life has changed. Some people come to see their friends, you know, they're supposed to meet in the church. I met a guy who came to meet because someone told him about a land deal or something and, and uh, they decided that they'll meet in the church because this other person came to church. So he said, I'm going to be in the evening in the church. You come over there and we'll meet after the church ends. So come around the time it closes. I'll be here from the beginning, but you can come around the time it closes. And the person came when the church started <laughs> and sat through and it really touched him and he, you know, he was changed and uh, touched by the whole thing that happened there. So the songs, the way we sing them is so important. The Spirit of God moving through those songs, touching people's life. See, a lot of people are filled with sadness and sorrow and uh, heaviness of heart, worried and troubled about various things in life. There is no song in their hearts. There is no joy in their hearts. But when we sing and minister to the Lord, it ministers to the people because they begin to see, hey, there is a way to be happy. There is a joy to be experienced as human beings. We don't have to always hang our face and be worried and troubled and and we tensed, we can put down our burdens because there is a God that we can trust in, depend on. We can lay our burdens down and rejoice in the Lord and praise God because He is bigger than our problems. People realize that. <laughs> we will get ministered to just by songs. You know, so many people have been really touched and changed just with the songs, even before the sermon starts. They're just touched and changed by the songs, you know. And in verse 3, he mentions three qualities that must be there in the song. Six uh, things are said about how we must worship, you know. That is to make music, you know, and shout for joy and sing and so on. But there are three qualities that must be there. That is mentioned in verse 3, where he says, Sing to him a new song. A new song is about freshness, you know. Does not necessarily mean that it is a song that it has never been sung before, newly been composed. It could be that, but it's not always that. A new song is a song that is sung about the old gospel, about the old things that the Bible says, but with a fresh voice, in a fresh way, that we've sung it thousand times, but this time when we sing it, it comes out and touches people's heart in a different way. Right? So it comes out fresh when a person is thankful in his heart and rejoicing in their heart and expressing that joy. That's fresh, you know. And uh, that freshness does something, you know. It's 
It's not like the stale old stuff, you just sing it monotonously. No. It is, it has got a new freshness. And secondly, the skill, because of the instruments, the skillful playing, skill. This is another quality that must be there. Yeah. Skill. Some people think just because it's church, we can just, you know, be unskillful. <laughs> Uh, just make a lot of noise, but, you know, and be so unorganized about it. No, it must be well practiced, it must be done with great skill, because it is done to magnify the Lord. It is done to bring other people into that worship and, and draw people to God, you see. So skill is very important. Skill has a place. And fervor, shout to the Lord, he says, that's fervor. There must be fervor in that worship. So freshness must be there, skill must be there, and fervor must be there. So we looked at all those things, and we prayed that God will really make our worship more and more fresh, skillful, and full of fervor, where Jesus is lifted up and glorified. Because when we do that, we not only really minister to people that are there, you know, Hundreds of times more people are listening from their homes, from wherever they are, through the online environment, through television and so on. So many thousands and thousands of people listen to it as we sing and praise and worship. So what we do in our church as people of God, as we come together and worship, has long-reaching consequences. It goes very far and wide. The scope of this thing is amazing with this online environment that is there today. We're on everything, you know. And the way it reaches people, it ministers to people is unbelievable, you know. It can do amazing wonders. Shall we just stop and pray for all those people that not only in our church but online and television and are part of our worship service. Let's pray that the Spirit of God will touch them, minister to them through the worship, through the songs, and through everything that happens there. That the anointing of God will flow. The yoke of bondage will be broken. Sadness and sorrow will be broken. Tears will be wiped off. People will be able to lay their burdens down and worship the Lord and praise the Lord. Lord, help us. Lord, help us, O oh God to sing like that, to play like that, to play skillfully, to sing with a freshness each time, O oh God, with a freshness each time. Let there be a freshness, freshness, O oh God, a freshness that the Spirit of God brings, a freshness because our hearts are bubbling with joy and thanksgiving and rejoicing, freshness because we're now thinking in new ways about how God has blessed us and how great God is. May those things come out in those songs, O oh God, through those songs. Let it touch the words. Let them touch the people. Let the music and, the, and, and all that happens there in the form of music touch the hearts of people, draw the hearts of people, minister to people. Let the spirit of sorrow and sadness be broken. Let joy and rejoicing enter into people, O oh God. Oh, even though people may be thousands of miles away in other countries may sometimes, in another environment totally, sometimes sitting at home alone, despairing with their problems, troubled with their difficulties. I pray that the Spirit of God will minister them tremendously. Minister to them, O oh God. Reach out to them. Let the music touch them, O oh God. Let them leap for joy wherever they are. Let them stop and pay attention to what the words are saying. Let the wonderful words of those songs reach the hearts of people. Let their hearts begin to sing. Let their hearts begin to believe. Let their hearts and minds begin to absorb all that is happening as we sing and praise you and worship you, O God. Help us to think of it in those terms, O God, not just as a thing that satisfies us, as a worship service, but as a thing that ministers to many, many, many thousands of people. Help us to see our worship 
as a medium through which people all around the world are reached and touched and changed and helped forever oh god thank you father thank you lord thank you jesus father we thank you thank you for the freshness for the skill for the fervor that there will be a new found fervor oh god that every sunday there will be that fervor oh god it will never become just mundane like the days it will never become just the ordinary it will always be fresh it will always be skillful and it will always be full of fervor that people will be able to raise their voices shout for joy and rejoice and tell the world shout it from their house tops that jesus is alive and that jesus is lord and that jesus is the savior jesus is the one that forgives sins jesus is one who changes lives oh god i pray that people will be able to convey that shout it out to the people out there so that it will fall on the ears of people that are listening to it oh father let it draw attention of so many people touch people and change people draw people to christ show them that there is something to this thank you father thank you lord thank you jesus now secondly in the second portion which is the main body of this psalm see the first three verses are simply called to worship the last three verses again is where the psalmist just hopes in the lord you know he waits in the lord and hopes in the lord 4 to 19 is actually the body where the main substance of the psalm is and there in the first section there verse 4 to 6 he talks about how god is to be praised for his word and for his works for his word and for his works now this is the way he puts it let me read to you um verse 4 and 5 he says for the word of the lord is right and true he is faithful in all he does the lord loves righteousness and justice the earth is full of his unfailing love the earth is full of his unfailing love now once again we need to dissect this and see what he's saying he's talking about two things two issues are two subjects here two great subjects one is he is talking about god's word and then he is talking about god's works god's acts god's works god's word and god's works what he's saying is that god must be praised for his word why should he praise him for his word because his word is right and true <laughs> the world is full of lies you see deception you see when you hear things you don't know which is true when you get things in whatsapp you don't know what is true <laughs> a lot of it is junk just lies told left and right about everything world is a world of lies but god's word when we read the word of god Our hearts are thrilled you feel like you're just throwing up your hands and shouting and worshiping the lord because every word here is true it is right like the way it says every word here is true and right isn't that something true and right Are you enjoying God's word? Next time when you read the word of God, meditate on it, think about this. It's not real. It's not like reading WhatsApp. <laughs> WhatsApp is sometimes a big joke, you know. All these things that you read online and in the social media and stuff, just junk. Very little value in it. What you watch on TV many times, you know, is worth it. very little really 
There's only few things that are good to watch, you know, that are very interesting to watch and you learn from these things and you enjoy these things and so on. But most of it happens to be, you know, more. Some, sometimes I think there's a lot more good in it than we think, but we don't usually gravitate to the good. We don't even know where to go sometimes. We just watch whatever comes on, you know, and it happens to be junk. But when you go to the Word of God, no matter which page you turn, wherever you turn, it is true, it is right. I like the way the psalmist puts it. There is the Word of God which is true and right. Yeah. True and right. So, he says, we need to praise God for His Word. <laughs> Because in the world, there is something to hang on. And that is the Word of God which is true and right. Yeah. And then, he says, We need to praise God also for His works. What about His works? He says He is faithful in all He does. So there is faithfulness in His works. The Lord loves righteousness. So whatever He does is righteous. Then He says, and justice. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. So there is justice. And then He says, fourthly, The earth is full of His unfailing love. You look at the world, it's full of His unfailing love. So he says, look at God's works. It shows His faithfulness. God is faithful. It shows His righteousness. His works show justice. And His work reflects His unfailing love. Now that's something to meditate upon as far as I am concerned. This is something that thrills my heart. It ought to thrill your heart too. Look at the works of God. It speaks of His faithfulness, His righteousness, His justice and His unfailing love. Everything that God has done speaks of those things. So the psalmist says, praise Him. Why praise Him? Why shout for joy? Why play so skillfully? Why sing? Why? Why sing joyfully to the Lord? Eh? Why play music? Make music. Why? He says, because His word is right and true and His works are always a reflection of His faithfulness, righteousness, justice, and His unfailing love. Amazing. <laughs> you and I can meditate on this all the time. My friend, your heart and my heart will stay pure and clean instead of all the junk that is going in from this world. It will be right, it will be true. There will be faithfulness, righteousness, justice, and His love, if we meditate on this. Can we spend some time praying about these things? Yeah. I want to spend some time praying about these things. See, we're learning how to pray. We're reading the verses. We are kind of looking at what is there. The psalmist is talking about praising God. It's a psalm of praise. He's inviting everybody to praise Him. Telling them, play the music, play it skillfully, shout for joy, sing joyfully. Make music, he says. Why? Because his word is true. And his works reflect his faithfulness, righteousness, justice, and unfailing love. Let's pray first for God's word. Let's thank God for his word. His word is right and it's true. Everybody say, the word of God is right and it's true. Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, which is right and true. There is a rightness about your word. It's never wrong. It's always right. Your word, O oh God. Oh, give us an appreciation of your word. I pray for each and every one that is today participating in this prayer. If we haven't thought about the word of God like that, 
I pray that the Spirit of God will draw their attention to this fact about the Word of God. What is so special about the Bible? What is so special about the Word of God? Why do we carry it? Why do we read it? Why do we respect it, revere it? Why do we look up to it? Why do we sit and hear preaching from it? Because it is right and it is true. In a world of lies, in a world of deception, in a world where we cannot trust anything and depend on anything, in a world where we find it difficult to differentiate between right and wrong, in a world which always at every turn deceives us, your word is right and true. That's the only thing in this whole world that is right and true, O oh God. So I pray that people will learn to really keep the word of God as the foundation for their lives. Not what somebody said, not what this person, that person said, not what any custom, culture, any kind of thing like that dictates. Because your word is right. And it is true. It is your word that is right and true, O God. And I pray that you will help us as your people to realize that your word is above everything that we have in this world. It's above the culture we come from, the practices that we are so used to, that has become a part of our lives. Your word is more right than anything anybody has ever shown us here in this world. Your word is the standard by which we must measure everything, O oh God. We thank you for the rightness of your word. Your word is right. Your word is true. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for we can build our life on the truth of God's word. We can lay our foundation for our life and our future on the truth of your word and the rightness of your word. Thank you for we can build our lives rightly. We can go in the right direction. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for our lives can be based on truth and not lies, not deceptions. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you for helping us to build our lives on the truth of your word, on the rightness of your word. And your word, which is right, always right, always right, always good, always right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that will lead us to success. That will lead us to peace. That will lead us to prosperity. That will lead us to good things in every realm of our life. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Help us to think of the word of God in that way. Help us to put the word in the first place because that's the thing that is right and true. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let that word become our greatest priority, the number one priority of our life. And everything that we do, be based on your word, oh, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. See, normally if you start praying, you will not be going into these subjects. You will not be coming in this direction at all. It is only when you open the Word of God and use it to pray, then you will find yourself going into these things, the things that really matter in life. It really matters what we build our lives on, that the Word of God is our foundation. We stand on God's word, on truth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. The word of God, that's what we praise God for. Remember to praise God and to thank God for the word of God. Pray to God that the word will come alive into your hearts when it's preached. 
that its meanings will be understood, that its application, how you need to apply it to your life, will be very clear to you. Pray. These are things that you must pray for. This rightness, this truth. Pray that it will impact your life. Change your life. It will direct your life, guide your life. Father, I pray that the word, as the people hear, your word, O oh Father, because it is so right and so true, I pray that they'll be directed by the word, like never before, led by the word, shown the answers to the problem through the word, shown the right approach to various difficulties they're facing through the word. I pray that the word will speak to them, O oh Father. The word will minister to them. The word will reveal things of God to them. The word will come alive every time they hear it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Then, he says, the works of God. Look at the works of God. What about the works of God? You see the faithfulness of God, righteousness of God justice of God and God's unfailing love. They describe his actions. His actions are like that. Now, how do we understand this? These four things. And how are we going to pray based on these four things? These are qualities of God. Faithfulness is God's quality. Righteousness is God's quality. Justice is God's quality. Unfailing love is God's quality. Being right is God's quality. Being true is God's quality. Everything about His word and His works shows God's quality, what kind of a God He is. Everything reflects that. I believe one of the greatest ways that you can Think of this for your life and my life is to pray that this will also become a part of our quality of life. That we, being people that are into the Word, that meditate on the Word, that read the Word, that hear the Word, that walk according to the Word, respect and revere the Word of God, we should pray that these things will become our quality, that we will become like that, that we will become in this way. Thank you, Father. And I think I just want to pray about that first, that God will help us to make this our quality of life. All these words describe his actions. May these same words describe our actions in this world, in everything that we do, in our job, in our family, in life, in our everything that we do. May these words be the words that describe us and the way we live. Let this become the quality of life for us. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for showing us who you are and how you operate. You're always right and you're always true, but not only that, you're faithful. You're a faithful God. You never forsake, you never forget. You never abandon us, you never leave us, nor forsake us. That's not your quality. Your quality is faithfulness. You're faithful to those people whom you have chosen to lead and to guide and to bless and to prosper. You're faithful to your promises. You're faithful to the words that you've said. You're faithful to everything that you promised. Everything that you have said in your word. You're faithful to it. You're faithful to carry it out in our lives and bring it to pass in our lives. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness, your faithfulness, O oh God. And I pray that 
as we experience your faithfulness and admire your faithfulness and uh, and uh, meditate on your faithfulness i pray lord that you will also make us faithful persons oh god faithful in every realm of our life oh god help us to be faithful to be faithful to you oh god totally dedicated to you oh thank you father faithful in all our endeavors faithful to our god never forsaking never leaving never walking away never going after other things never 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 leaving this path that we have been brought into never leaving this way oh thank you father thank you lord i pray that you'll help us to walk in that way faithfulness give us faithfulness oh god faithfulness that quality of faithfulness help us make us faithful people faithful people in our jobs in our families in our in every area of our lives we pray that you will make us faithful faithful in jesus name thank you father faithful 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 oh god oh thank you father thank you lord thank you lord bless us with that quality bless us and change us every day oh father just like yourself faithful 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 that you will never forget us never forget us never leave us nor forsake us thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord oh thank you father thank you for your forgiveness of the sins that we have so freely and fully enjoyed thank you for you never counted against us thank you for you put that away as far as east is from the west so we rejoice in you lord rejoice in you rejoice in you thank you for we are a new creation thank you thank you that all things are passed away all things have become new that you will never rake up the old eh? that you are always faithful to us thank you jesus thank you father thank you lord oh thank you father faithfulness next is righteousness righteousness see god has given us his righteousness his righteousness is the thing with which he covers us so that instantly not because we have been trained in righteousness so much and we walk perfectly in righteousness but we have been just clothed with righteousness clothed with christ righteousness that's a different way of saying it we are clothed with christ righteousness we are clothed with jesus righteousness thank you father thank you lord the righteousness that is given to us that covers us is the righteousness that is imputed to us that is one thing but we need to walk in righteousness we need to walk in righteousness so that in everything that we do righteousness will be seen righteousness will be our quality pray for god to make us righteous in quality in our quality of life oh thank you father Father we thank you for the righteousness that you have so fully and freely given so that today God treats us as if we have never sinned as if we have never been bad as if we have never been unrighteous he only sees the righteousness of Christ the perfection of Christ he sees oh what a grace oh god that we enjoy your grace we thank you we appreciate your grace that you do not see our faults you do not see our shortcomings you simply clothe us with righteousness and you choose to see us that way with Christ's righteousness thank you lord but i pray that today that we will be righteous in life also in our walk every day in everything that we do let that righteousness with which we are clothed with make us different so that we handle everything differently oh god that the righteousness that we are clothed with 
let it make us live in a totally different way oh father oh thank you father thank you thank you thank you thank you jesus thank you for making us really righteous in life thank you for helping us to walk in your way in the right way doing the right things in the right way oh father oh thank you jesus thank you lord Thank you for not only have you imputed righteousness to us, Christ's righteousness to us, and see us not as sinners but as righteous, but you also help us to live, us, live a righteous life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for helping us to shun sin, to, to put away sin, to put away from us everything that is a hindrance to our life in purity, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, for making us righteous, righteous, really righteous, O oh Father, in life. And we pray also for justice. See, the third thing is justice. Justice. Justice is the ability to do the right thing in every situation. To do the right thing, see. That's justice. Justice means doing the right thing. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. May this divine quality become ours also. Father, we pray that you will help us to follow the path of justice, O God. That, you, that we will hunger after your righteousness and justice, O Father. Oh, thank you, Father, that we will be just in everything that we do, everything that we put our hand to do. May there be justice, may there be a strong sense of justice prevail in our life, O oh God, so that we do justice in every situation, justice regardless of who we are dealing with, regardless of what is happening, that we will deal with a sense of justice, O oh God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Guide us in that kind of life. Give us that quality. Make that our character. Inculcate that within us, this sense of justice, this obligation to see things done in the right way, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Then is unfailing love. This is something amazing and wonderful, unfailing love. Love which never fails. The Bible says that the love of God never fails. It says that in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. Love never fails. But do you know, in the world, love in all realms of life, in all areas of life fails. Love between friends fails. Many times. After so many years, people separate. They stop loving and they start hating. You know, something happens that separates them, drives a wedge between them, divides them. They're divided. They think in two different ways. There is no unity, there is no harmony. Everything is destroyed. Everything is destroyed. Love failure, it happens in this world a lot. So love fails between friends, love fails between family members. Eh? Even they say blood is thicker than water, but it fails there also. Between family members, love fails. So that instead of loving, we begin to hate. And then love fails in marriage between husbands and wives. Love fails. When you look at all these things, you begin to understand that we are in a very bad shape, really. We are living a risky life. You don't know when it's going to fail. Human love is like that. Human love says that they love you today, but tomorrow they do exactly the opposite. They come against you with everything that they've got. That's what human love is all about. 
we live in a dangerous world a world of sin and in the midst of that god is raising up as a society the church of the living god and unfailing love must be their trademark that must be their character that must be inculcated within them let's pray that god will infuse his love in us that we will become a loving community we will love in an unfailing way that love will not fail the love we that we have in various realms of life will not fail help us to experience that oh god oh may this divine quality this agape love become our love let it dictate our life let that love guide us in all our actions oh god in everything that we do in this world and everything that we do to one another let it be motivated by that kind of love and never out of hate never out of any other thing that tries to influence us which is against love oh father we pray that you'll ground us in love oh help us to love one another and live in love may the love of god be seen in us oh god in every realm of life may the love of god fill us fill us with your love oh father oh thank you father your work always reflects your love everything that you do reflects your love you can see your love we can see your love everywhere every which way to we turn we can see your love your amazing love We thank you for it, O oh God. Oh, we thank you for your amazing love. I pray that you will turn us into a people of love, a community of love. We pray for the Christian community, people that have experienced the outpouring of God's love, that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, your word says. So the Christians have the love of God shed abroad in their hearts, and I pray that that they'll be full of it in such a way that the world can see it and be attracted to it that the world will be drawn to it oh thank you father thank you lord thank you lord i pray that because of love that people will be drawn to christ drawn to christ because nothing in this world satisfies like love satisfies like true love satisfies and there is no true love in this world except the love of god that you give us in our hearts thank you father thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus thank you for these qualities become our qualities faithfulness righteousness justice and unfailing love may it become our quality quality of every family every young person old person every kind of person let it be our quality oh god let it let it be the quality of life that we enjoy thank you jesus in jesus name we pray amen